All right, guys. Uh, Mr. J, I just here. I just had to make one more video to send you off on your summer. Students, there's so much we didn't get to learn together. So much that is just mind-bogglingly cool. I didn't even pronounce that word right, but it's really fun. This world that we're living in, and uh, so this is the world. This video I'm about to show you. Um, this just came out uh, 18 hours ago uh, from one of my favorite, one of the best in the world biomedical animators. Um, they're out of Australia. And uh, so we're going to go see a bunch of views of a typical human cell. Um, this is an animal cell. This is a human cell. I want you to take a look at the bottom left hand corner. There's a percent, there's a times magnification. So this is what a cell looks like at 10,000 times. We're going to go up to probably about 10 million times of, uh, of resolution. So how many different orders of magnitude are we looking at? Well, one, two, three, four, five. We're looking across five orders of magnitude here. Yeah, uh, four, four, four to five orders of magnitude here. So um, have fun with it. And uh, I'm going to try and narrate it as we go. And I know it's sloppy. Here we go. All right, so this is a human cell. We got the nucleus. We know that to be the container of all genetic material. Now we zoomed in on the DNA, which is in red. It's wrapped around special proteins that help it package. These proteins are important to organize DNA during mitosis. Here we see that my uh, this is transcription of DNA to make the mRNA, which will leave the nucleus and make a protein. You can see those green proteins. This is the mRNA package leaving the nucleus through specialized nuclear pores. Now, the nucleus is separate within its own membrane, separate within the cell. It's believed that the nucleus might have been a cell that um, lived by itself before in evolutionary history. Zooming out on the nucleus again, look how large it is. It is central to the cell. 10,000x magnification. Also, here's a different false color image of the cytoskeleton, the transportation network. Um, centered on the centrioles of um, the cytoskeleton. So this is a mobile skeleton. It's made of protein. Um, it's shaped really like that, and you are so mechanical. You have specialized proteins that walk on the transport proteins, delivering things, um, and they look like AT-AT walkers. I'm serious. This is this is the truth. Um, 10 million times magnification. We're really zoomed here on an actin microfilament. That is the pink thing that we see across our screens. There's three of them. So microtubules is made of actin. So here's microtubules being actively grown and taken away and dissolved into its subunits, its building blocks. Again, microtubules, building blocks come together and disassemble. So I'm trying to fit in the jargon with you. All right. Um, actin is another form of structural protein. Um, it can also be um, it can make chains, which you just saw it do. And actin bundles are also used in muscle cells. So here is a cell actively building out its cytoskeleton to reach out. So this is important for animal cells. This is the process of growth. Yes, we have mapped the proteins. This gray stuff down beneath, that's one way to show the phospholipid bilayer. So actin again is used in your muscles. We have three types of muscle, cardiac, smooth, and skeletal. They're all basically like this. They do contraction to pull you. You can't push. Muscle can only pull. It's contracting. We have actin and myosin micro muscle fibers. Back to the cytoskeleton. Remember the cytoskeleton is typically everywhere. Now we're going to look at mitochondria. So these are believed to be bacterial in origin. The, um, after evolution, an uh, 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 animal ate another animal cell and then they didn't dissolve it. So Mitochondria interact with each other. They have their own DNA. They were their own life before. So they're pretty much in charge of themselves, but they have a symbiosis with the cell. Um, muscle cells, high activity cells, neuron cells have a lot of mitochondria, cells that are um, in response to their energy needs. So coming off of the nucleus and, and, the, mito and the endoplasmic reticulum are proteins. And proteins and things can go into the Golgi apparatus and the Golgi apparatus is a, is a packaging and shipping house. So we can see vesicles coming in, pancaking up, and spreading out. Now, these membranes are made of phospholipids, just like the cell membrane is made of phospholipids. The phospholipid is a very powerful. And I want you to think of the cell 
in terms of bags inside of bags. They're all bags of different kinds of water. That's a very simple way to put it. Um, again, we're looking at the cell membrane. This time our phospholipids are in blue. Um, inside, we can see on the top of the screen is a cytoskeleton and associated proteins that kind of they navigate a little bit, but they don't. these purple proteins, they don't move too far. They are anchored by the cytoskeleton. The membrane, again, phospholipids, it's very thin compared to the volume of a cell, but it is quite powerful. The cytoplasm is everything else that's inside the cell besides the organelles. Here we have nutrients, amino acid building blocks, uh, glucose, ions, the cytoplasm. Um, I can't get rid of this. I wish I could. I, I just don't know how right now. Um, different views of the cell. And thank you, especially to E.O. Wilson Biodiversity Foundation and the Walter and Eliza, Eliza Hall Institute. Wehi is the name. Wehi Animations, guys. I'm going to throw that link on my website, and I want you to bookmark that link. Subscribe to that link um, from YouTube. Okay, guys, I hope you have a wonderful summer. We're going to learn so much. I was serious. Please read some books over the summer break or play some instruments or both or go get exercise. I'll see you around August time. Bye.